In today's video, I have a super fun technique to share with you using my all-purpose mat, some Capri ink from Close to My Heart, as well as their liquid glass. So I hope you'll stay around and let's get started. Hi, I'm Katie Taylor at scrappingkatie.com where I show you how to preserve your family's memories through the art of scrapbooking. I have pulled out the eight and a half by 11 sketchbook that the creative design team released a few months ago. And I'm going to be using one of the patterns from the sketchbook right here, the one with the circles. And then I've also pulled out some of the uh, buy two, get one free cut above kits. These are wonderful. If you um, follow me here, you know that I love to use these when I'm catching up. Or if I just kind of need a mental break from not having to overthink things. These are wonderful kits because a lot of it's done for you. But if you've been scrapbooking as long as I have, or if you enjoy that creative process, then they allow you to add your own little touches to them. And I can't decide between this one. I've already made this left layout as a one page layout of my daughter. And I'll try to pop that up on the screen for you. So I'm contemplating going ahead and using this one. Or I am thinking about using one of these with the hearts. So we'll just see how that turns out. And of course, I have some photos of um, our daughter and some of her friends at the pool. And then I have a really fun technique to share with you on some faux water I'm going to add to the layout. So make sure you stick around for that. So let me clear these things off, kind of make some decisions off camera, and then I will be right back to jump into the process. Here are the two options. You can see very, very different here. Now again, I've already used this layout, so I'm limited on what is left, but let me just kind of walk you through what is left. So that is pre-printed, you guys, saw me try to pick that up. That's one thing I love about these is you get the look that it was all paper piece, but it's actually pre-printed on this piece of paper. And a lot of them either have um, or even have folk stitching, stuff like that. So we've got that one. I have pulled out these photo mats thinking that those might work. Um, I have two 4 by 6s currently printed, but I'm thinking I might do the three by fours, especially since I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down to that eight and a half by 11. And then of course I have these white photo mats and then I've pulled out this one. Now this is the one that I haven't actually used yet. So you can see how much I have left. So I have the stickers. It would be the, this top portion that says layout one. So I have all these stickers to play with. I have pulled out these two photo mats. And then I have these die cuts that say, I don't want to press those out, that say layout one. So of course I'm not going to use the black and white uh, flowers, but I kind of like the hearts and then I like these bright colors. And then of course that circle would be cute. And here's a look at that pre-printed base. So you can see that subtle pattern there and of course the hearts. Even though this is, even though this is a swimming layout, those hearts would still be... Um, relative. You could actually, you know, use them in your journaling or something like that. The only thing that really wouldn't fit is you warm my, it is meant to be, you warm my heart. Um, I love the sentiment. I just don't think I can use it. So if I do use this one, I think I'm going to have to find an alternative for that. So we have that. And then also keeping in mind the fun technique I have to show with the water. I'm thinking that it's gonna show up better on this. And then let's talk about whether I'm gonna keep this a 12 by 12 or an eight and a half by 11. Because one thing about sketches is I could easily take the sketch and I could stretch it to a 12 by 12. 
I am going to start off by actually removing this sentiment from this base page. And then that way I can use it either on a card, maybe a slimline card or some other project with those stickers that say heart. So I'm just lining this up in my cutter and then starting the blade at specific points to make sure that I'm cutting just that portion out. Much like I do when I'm getting a big 12 by 12 that you won't see the entire paper. So I've done that and then now is for the fun technique of the water. I'm taking my Capri ink and just smooshing or rubbing that all over my multi-purpose mat or all-purpose mat. And then I'm going to take an older bottle of liquid glass and just kind of spill it out, for lack of a better word, over this Capri ink. Now, you might notice that I don't have my glass board underneath me. I've already tried this and stupid, silly me, I tried it on my glass board where liquid glass is actually a glue. Um, it does have some neat properties, but first and foremost, um, it acts like a glue. And so I've ruined my glass mat. I'm gonna have to purchase another one. But for this purpose, the all purpose mat is wonderful. And you can see here, I am just taking one of my multimedia spatulas and I am just spreading that liquid glass around, picking up that Capri ink and then making it kind of into a pool or a natural water shape. And then I'm also taking some of the extra and I want to create almost like little um, water drops. Not little, they're big, but you'll see here in just a second at the end of the project how that works out. So I am going to use some more liquid glass just so I can kind of make this a little bit thicker and then also spread it out a little bit more and have some more of those little droplets. So again, I'm trying to keep even pressure. You can see me kind of playing with it here. I don't really want any rough edges on the surface of the water, so to speak. And then I also wanna pick some up on my spatula to make those little uh, droplets. So I'm going to finish this. I also want to tell you that you can do this with any of the stick glue as well. I did set this aside for a couple of days and revisited it but here is a look at that. It just peels away from this all-purpose mat and then plus the all-purpose mat allows you to kind of bend it and manipulate it which kind of pops up those edges. So I'm just going to peel away these drops of water and then I am going to start on the big puddle of water and we can get that removed. Now again, I walked away for a few days, but this probably would dry maybe in an hour or so, depending on um, if you had it in a well ventilated area. But you can see here, I am just lifting this up ever so slightly. Now it is kind of thick, but not too thick. You can see here and I just love the look that that Capri ink gave to that, a real water look. I'm gonna bring back in that prepared base and kind of play with the placement of this water here. I want it to look like spilled water, but I also want to show the majority of that water. So this photo up here is the four by four photo, also kind of keeping, keeping in line with the sketch that I'm looking at. It will go on top and I've also double matted that so it will hold, uh, hide that cutout. And then I've got the three by four photo. So one of the things that I love about the uh, starter kits or the cut above kits are the stickers. And I am going to pull quite a few stickers from this sheet. So I've got that bottom border and then this top border actually is all one. I thought they were separate, but no, it's a single border. I'm going to put it on the top and then you come back in with some die cuts. You can see those little bitty ones over on the right that I will add later with some 3D foam tape. Now that I have my photos in place, I have uh, repositioned that water, and then I'm going to come back in with these little pennants and then add some 3D foam tape to these die cuts. Now these die cuts are meant to overlap. The first one will actually be the same width and it'll just kind of overlap those pennants a little bit. But I love this one. This one is actually a little wider than the stripped stickers. And so I love that it kind of hangs down as well. So I am going to look at adhering this down. Now here is my mistake, but good thing you are watching because you can learn from my mistake. 
When I put additional liquid glass, it made those dots. You can see those there. I will show you a way that I corrected it. But I also found that this liquid glass, if you apply either glue dots or even a strong tape adhesive, so I use my ATG, ATG gun right here, they actually stick to that ATG gun. Now you could also staple it. You don't want to do anything too harsh because I am afraid that even though the liquid glass is pliable, it probably will break. So I'm actually adding some Distress Oxide on top of this water. I've got two colors, Salty Ocean and, oh, it has something with a bird in it. I don't know. I'll leave them linked down below. But I end up liking that look. And then I'm going to actually use some more of the stickers from the sticker sheet to hide some more of those visible dots of the water. Now, I know that most of the water, you know, is imperfect but I just, I could definitely tell where I glued that. It's kind of like when you're using vellum. Vellum is one of those things that's so hard to glue down. You always have to find a spot to hide where you adhered it. But I, I think in the end it worked out. So stick around and see for yourself. I am going to cut this and I am going to attach it just right there by that die cut tag. And then I'm going to play with these little stickers. Now these stickers, I did add 3D foam tape to the back as well as those heart stickers. And then I am pulling out one of my favorite stencils. I originally learned this from Jama. She is part of the creative design team and has become one of my really good friends friends and she used this stencil for some water way back when when the stencil first came out and I have since used it on three projects as water it just is so organic I don't even think that I've used it for its actual purpose yet but I love it for the water so I am just masking off the border at the bottom as well as my photos and then just taking some salty ocean distress oxide ink and I am applying that stencil to three places on this layout base. That Distress Oxide ink will allow me to take some water here in a second and let that water react with the Distress Oxide. So how it reacts is you're going to apply the water either by a spray bottle or I like to also, which I learned from Jama, spray it in my palm and then kind of flick it. And then you take a... Um, paper towel. I'm going to use the same one that I'm hiding my photos here with and you just blot that water away. You'll be able to see in the close-ups here in just a second just what look it gives that Distress Oxide. So I've also added some of that Distress Oxide and the water droplets to some scratch pieces of paper and I have a thin cut or a die cut that says best friends and I'm just running that through my die cut machine and then I'm going to use that as my title. Originally I wanted to use the negative of the best because all of those letters come out separately and then I was going to use the scripted friends but in the end I decided to actually use the individual best and the reason I chose that salty ocean is just to add some more of that dark blue color. Now this is one of my favorite stamp sets. I've used it on, gosh, maybe eight projects <laughs> so far. And it's got this little sun I'm inking up in lemonade. And then it's got several clouds, but my favorite are these two clouds that are together. And I'm bringing back in that Capri ink. Now one thing about the labeling masking tape that I use, I love because it's removable, but it keeps its stickiness. So I can use this over and over again, not only for this project to mask off those pennants, but I can also use it on other projects as well. So the other thing is these uh, journaling lines. They are kind of dotted journaling lines. You know, I usually draw those in, but I'm gonna use charcoal ink to actually stamp that and then come back in with my title and just add some liquid adhesive and glue that in between the photos. My title, I always knew I wanted to be right here because those photos are separated. I elongated those photos kind of because I'm working with a 12 by 12 versus an eight and a half by 11. So by creating that space in between the photos and then having the title in between them, it's going to kind of group those together. 
So I misplaced the eye to friend, so I'm just going to use one of my little hole punches and punch out of the negative space. Now I did have to come off of that little wet water spot and then use my pickup tool to just adhere that down to the layout. Now I am going to pull out journey uh, sequins. Now, can anyone tell me how many blues I've actually used on this layout? But the good thing is they all kind of are matchy matchy. So I'm going to pull, put some of those in just to the lid of my uh, round craft organizer and take my pickup tool. This is by far one of my favorite tools. It's got a wax end, makes it really easy to pick up those little things. And I'm applying those to some micro glue dots. Those are the smallest glue dots. And that's going to allow me to just peel those away from this strip and adhere those randomly around the project and then I'm going to use some of the milky white ones that come and I'm going to put those on the water and then adhere some up here up at the top to kind of round out that sequence. Now one thing about having to hide that hole in my base, I had to make these mats a little bit wider than what I liked, but I now get to use my favorite white gel pen to kind of add some doodling around the edges. And then I'll come back in and I'll add the year right here to the right of that photo. Here is a still shot look of this layout, as well as some close ups. I love that stamping that goes over that stenciling and you can see that wet, um, those watermarks come away from that distress oxide and then here is a look at that pool and then just all the dimension that you get don't forget to shop the links down below if you liked what you saw leave me a comment and a thumbs up and don't forget to check out our eight and a half by 11 sketchbook whether you're an eight and a half by 11 scrapper or not you can always adapt these to a size that fits your needs thank you so much for stopping by and watching you guys have a wonderful weekend